Seamus Heaney, you're a, a northerner who left. We're in Dublin. Do you think this is a moment that we can risk, perhaps afford, to think that we've got to some new plateau of hope? I think uh, this is the firmest moment in the uh, shaky ascent. Um, I've always uh, had this little triad for uh, the, the truth about life and about art. The main thing is getting started, keeping going, and getting started again. And I think the getting started again is the most difficult and the most crucial. And I feel that not just in terms of the last 30 years, but maybe in terms of the last 100 years, maybe in the last 300 years, something is possible. Some new start is being um, initiated today. If one was looking at this as a, a work of epic poetry, mm. where would the heroes be? Well, uh, epic poetry has to do with action quite often and, uh, and wars. Arma virumque cano, says Virgil, ar ar arms and the man. We have had plenty of wars, but I think that this is more Shakespeare history plays, uh, maybe. Uh, it's about the founding of, of new of new possibilities within the state uh, and um, the heroes are for the moment the, the people who, who brought us through the, uh, into political uh, uh, discourse and into political action in the last uh, 25 years. They have been honoured uh, universally uh, by the uh, people like John Hume and David Trimble but it has to be said that uh, the Sinn Féin leaders who brought uh, us from arms to, as it were, to men and womankind, uh, have to be honoured also. Um, the people to be honoured are those who wrested some form of democracy out of the chaos. There will be people in the unionist community who will say, ah, but Seamus Heaney, he's a nationalist. What's he got to say to us? Do you find it easy to think of things to say to them in such a moment? I have always thought of the unionist community as uh, as my part of me. I mean, I, I I I never said anything. I think that that wasn't uh, true for them too. I grew up in a small farming community, eye to eye with Protestant neighbours. I grew up with uh, Protestant neighbours who, who uh, had um, a sense of humour and a sense of proportion. Now it was rural and it was ritualized, the, the, the divisions. I would say for the, to the unionist community that they have actually included uh, the um, nationalist mi minority in their imagining uh, now. And that is something that is a radical change. Uh, when I was growing up, Irishness as a value was written out of the official culture it was not present in the official media. Uh, the unionist communities, to some extent, were in denial about the presence of uh, other values. It was, I mean, it was officially just uh, included. That was an enraging situation, and uh, part of what has happened in the last uh, 30 years or so, not only through politics, but through culture and other, in other areas, is the making of space for that value. No, nobody's in denial anymore. What most surprises you about what we're now seeing? Well, I suppose uh, surprise is almost impossible. I mean, they're rejoicing, yes. What I rejoice in is that a, a common story is achieved. At least, there's a, it, this isn't quite a terminus. Obviously, it's a beginning, it's a middle, it's, it's a wobbling around. But at, nevertheless, it it represents somewhere where everybody has arrived together. Whether you're DUP, Sinn Féin, official unions, or SDLP, whether you think of yourself as British or Irish, if you live within the Northern Collective, the story somehow has become one story uh, in the last while. You just translated um, what is seen as the first great work upon which English is built, uh, Beowulf. And in describing Beowulf, you say, this is really uh, a poem about encountering something monstrous and defeating it. Uh, yeah. And in some ways, I know this is how you see the whole century. Yeah. Where yeah. do you think uh, uh, Northern Ireland fits into this kind of battle between uh, the monstrous and the good? 
Well, I, uh, perhaps uh, I, uh, my notion about Beowulf is the, r the rhythm of, of uh, encounter, uh, extreme, extreme ordeal, and, and uh, a little exhaustion and tremor. I mean, the, the poem ends with a defenseless people. Uh, their hero is gone. Uh, ordeal has been gone through, but they are, and they're, they know a lot about danger. They know a lot about dread, and they are a tremble a little. And I, th I think that that is the general condition of the species at the end of the, end of the century, but it is also the particular condition of uh, people in Northern Ireland. Uh, they do know a lot. They know a lot about hurt and suffering. I mean, the amount of secret and un unsaluted sorrow in individual homes throughout uh, Ulster is enormous. If you think, if you think just of the voltage of of hurt and resentment, and then if you think of the sort of dignity and uh, stoicism, there, there's there's a lot of actual spiritual uh, grandeur about uh, 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 under under the kind of line of of, of being noticed. A lot of people going on with, going on sorrowfully and, and, and capably with their lives. Does this moment inspire you to write? I remember around about the mid 80s saying, we can't keep on writing elegies, you know? Uh, I, and I, I, refuse, I, I refuse duty in that way. So uh, it, it inspires you to write in that way, in that, in that you answer the situation with something different. Uh, and. Uh, this, this year I'm going to put on my Christmas card uh, two and a half lines from Beowulf, as a matter of fact. The poem says, A light appeared, and the whole place brightened, the way the sky does when heaven's candle is shining brightly. And I think that that is the writing I would use for the moment.